Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 287. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about something that has been in my mind for the last couple of weeks, and it seemed like a really appropriate topic to discuss in this episode. So we're going to talk about how to let go of worrying. Actually, it's just me, so I'm going to talk about worrying. So I'm going to be honest here. I can be a worrier. I think it's definitely improved over the years, and it's not something that's a major problem in my life, but it's something that's come to my attention in the last couple of weeks, and so I thought it was worth discussing with you, because I know I'm not the only person in the world who experiences this. So I'm recording this episode in the week after my kickboxing winter course, which is a colder version of the summer course that I talked a lot about last July. Except this time I was grading, and I didn't do the grading in summer, so this time, in my opinion, the stakes were higher. So it's a two-day course, it's 13 hours of intense fitness and self-defense and kickboxing over the course of two days. So it's five hours on Saturday, eight hours on Sunday. It's challenging physically and mentally, because you just get tired by the end of it, and the end is when you do the sparring. And that's the most challenging part for me. And so it's just, you're really exhausted by the end. And today's the first day that my body doesn't, like I'm kind of back to normal. And that's taken a few days. Anyway, so I was worried about all kinds of things. I was worried that the winter course would be more difficult than the summer course because all the instructors say that it is. I was worried that I wouldn't do well in my line work. I was worried that I wouldn't pass my grading. Now, I did plenty of mindset work in the weeks and days running up to this winter course, and I also did the practical action of practicing my line work and my fitness stuff every day at home. But I was often short-tempered and difficult to be around because I had this kind of low-level worry energy and, and thoughts running in the back of my mind, so much so that my husband said, I really look forward to this grading being over so that you go back to normal. So this was something that other people noticed as well. But then I got to the winter course last weekend, and it was fine. Like, yes, it was really challenging. There was a two-hour kind of run with fitness on Sunday morning that was challenging and tiring. But I did it, and I wasn't dead after it. Like, my body hurt, I was sore, I was tired. But I was fine. I wasn't like dead tired like I have been in the past. And yes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my entire body was aching. But I was fine. In fact, I actually enjoyed it once I was there and once I was getting through it. I really enjoyed parts of it. And best of all, I found out yesterday that I passed my grading, so I will be getting my brown white belt in the new year, which is really exciting. So much so that I'm actually looking forward to the summer course this year. I got the dates yesterday. I've got it in the calendar. I'm really looking forward to doing my grading to brown black in the summer. So it's really interesting to me how this situation went from worry and stress to not only was that not as bad as I'd built it up to in my head, But it was enjoyable. It was good. I mean, it was tough, but it was good. I liked it. And I'm looking forward to the next one. So I'm sure that you've experienced something like this in your life where you were worried about something, whether it was going to a course or trying something new or doing something in your business, like running a webinar or giving like a talk 
that we do all kinds of things that take us outside of our comfort zone and that are challenging to us and that we often worry about the days and weeks coming up to this thing. So let's talk about worry. Is worry always a bad thing? Now, I don't think that it is. You know, I think some of the worrying that I experienced before my winter course was good because it raised this concern, wanting to pass my grading and wanting to not suffer too badly on the course. It raised this concern or these concerns to the top of my mind. It got me to focus on this thing that was really important to me. So as I was kind of rounding up my goals and my projects for the end of the year, this grading was one of the biggest things. It was one of the most important things to me. I wanted to do well on it, and I wanted it to be pleasant. I wanted to not kind of suffer through it the way I kind of felt like I did the summer course. So it was something that was important to me. It was in the forefront of my mind, and the fact that I was worried about it kind of kept it present for me. So I think that some worry is okay because it got me to do the mindset work to make it easier, got me to do the practical action work, which was starting to train with running again a couple of months in advance, doing the line work at home to practice, doing the fitness stuff to practice. It got me to take both the mindset work and the practical actions that I needed to take to actually do well on this. Because if I had just kind of taken it easy and not done any preparation, I probably wouldn't have passed. Or if I had, it, I would have just barely passed. And it would have been very, very painful and just excessively difficult. So again, I think some worry is okay because it raises these concerns to the top of our minds and gets us to take the action, hopefully. The problem is when we dwell on the worry and we let it become kind of over-consuming and run our lives, and we don't actually do the practical action or do the mindset work that's going to make us do well in the situation. That's when it becomes unproductive, and that's when it becomes damaging because it raises our stress levels, and it just makes everything more difficult. So the way I dealt with this was to become aware of this worry. It was to become aware of the fact that I was worried about this course. So I think it's really important to not, again, not dwell on the stuff that we're worrying about, but to make it real. Journal about it. Get it out of your head and onto paper. And this is a really important step because oftentimes when we take all of our worries and we dump them onto paper and we actually read them, sometimes we're like, that's ridiculous. Like, that's not going to happen. So if you actually write down all of your what if questions, like, what if I fail? What if I'm really tired and I can't complete the course? What if I trip and fall when I'm doing the piggyback run? Because that was one of the things we had to do after we'd run for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so or an hour. I think it was after we'd been running for an hour. We went to this park and we had to do a piggyback run. That's another thing I was worried about because you had to pick someone of your weight and size, carry them on your back and run around a field with them. I'm terrified every time we do that because I'm always afraid I'm going to like trip and fall and face plant with this person my size on my back and like break all of my teeth and my nose and my face. So as I hear myself saying that, I realize, you know, that's never happened. I've done piggyback runs before. I've been fine. Like, yeah, it could happen, but it's probably not going to happen. So when you write down all of these what ifs and you get those worst case scenarios out of your head and onto paper, that's where you can see them and think, okay, like, what are the odds of this happening? Like, is this really going to happen? And what can I do to prevent it? So. I think it's really, really useful to give these worries the time and space, pull them out of our heads, and get them onto paper in our journal. Or you could write them on a separate piece of paper so you could burn them if you wanted to. But I think it's important to give them the kind of space and time and make them real so that we can see them and we can do something with them. It's kind of like you know, having a bunch of goals or things that you want to do in your head and not writing them down. Like you're much less likely to actually achieve your goals if you're not writing them down. Like you need to make things real. 
And I think that by writing our worries down, we're not necessarily, it's a very difficult comparison because I think we need to make them real so we can do something about them, but again, not dwell on them. So there's a fine line here. You want to do some work with this stuff, but not like go overboard. And I've written out a bunch of journal prompts, and I'm going to share those in the Patreon group that you can use to get clear on this. So it's stuff like, you know, what am I worried about? Why am I worried about this? What are my worst fears? What are my what ifs? What are the worst possible outcomes? But then you need to turn it around. Once you've gotten all the crap out of your head and onto paper, you need to turn it around and you say, what would I rather have instead? What is the best possible outcome I can imagine? What do I really, really want? So instead of face planting during the piggyback run, breaking my face, not being able to complete the grading, failing the course, like all these horrible things, what do I want instead? I want to have lots of energy for the run. I want to have lots of energy for the other fitness, for the line work, for the grading. I want to do really well in the sparring. I want to pay attention to detail. I want to stay calm and cool and collected when I'm doing the sparring, even when I'm sparring with people I don't know. So it's like kind of taking all of your individual fears, turning them on their heads and saying, what do I want instead? Like instead of these crappy, scary things, what would I rather have? What is the best possible outcome I can imagine? And really get into detail with that. So take every single one of those fears and flip them on their heads and then add to it. Like, what are some other things that you want? Do you want to feel proud of yourself? Do you want to feel like really satisfied with your performance? Like, what do you really, really want? What's the best possible outcome that you can imagine? Even if you think it's like, ridiculous. Like people coming up to you and saying, wow, you did really, really well in this thing. I watching you. That was great. I'm really impressed with how far you've come. Like whatever. Like what do you want to be seeing yourself doing? What do you want to be feeling when you're doing this? What do you want to be hearing from other people? What do you want to like hear people say to you? What do you want your thoughts to be? Like, what's all the good stuff that makes up this best possible outcome? So really kind of get into it. And you can write this down, or you can sit with your eyes closed and visualize it. You can do both, like whatever works for you, but really kind of flip all those fears on their heads and create your best possible outcome. Now, you need to analyze what to do about that so you can achieve that. Because just by sitting and visualizing, you're probably not going to manifest that result. Maybe you can. Most people probably can't. You need to do practical stuff. So the next questions you need to ask yourself are, what are the practical things I can do to achieve this best outcome? So for me, you know, starting running a couple of months before, practicing the line work at home, it was practicing the fitness at home. It was, you know, going to class. That's the practical stuff. Then what's the mindset stuff you need to do? What do you need to believe about yourself in order to achieve this best outcome? Who do you need to be in order to achieve this? So you need to do the mindset work to transform your fears, your blocks, your limiting beliefs. And I did a ton of work on this. So I did beliefs of all kinds. I did stuff like running is easy for me. My body loves running. It's easy for me to do well on the winter course. I stay calm and centered when doing my line work for grading. The winter course is fun and easy for me. I did all kinds of stuff based on all of my individual fears about the winter course, flipped them on their heads, created belief statements, and did those. I also did a process that we have in Site K called a Vac to the Future, which is where you create that really kind of rich visualization of what you want to be seeing, hearing, and feeling in terms of what's your best possible outcome or your goal. And then after I did that, I did some more belief statements. Like I did a lot of work on this stuff. And I really believe that the mindset work that I did helped me to get in the best possible mindset and mental state to do well on this course to the point where I actually enjoyed this thing that I'd been really, really worried about. So as always, it's really important to combine the mindset work with the practical action work. So 
I kind of go back and forth on this. Like I do both. And I always say this is like a spiral staircase that you're walking up. One step is the practical action work. One step is the mindset work. And I was doing a lot of that. I mean, I started training for this with the runs probably two or three months ago. Might have been three months ago because I kind of stopped running after the summer course because my hip was hurting. And anyway, so I kind of had to step it up. So I had to plan in advance, but I started doing the training, started practicing at home and started doing the mindset work. And so it was like, I would do a bit of mindset work and then I would take the action. And sometimes through taking the action, I realized that I had more mindset work to do. And so I would clear that, take some actions, come up with some new stuff, do some more mindset work. So it's constant process for me of going back and forth. So do the mindset work, get yourself in the right mental state so that you can achieve this best possible outcome, but also take the practical action. So you need to ask yourself, can I do something about this situation? Can I do something to ensure that my best possible outcome is more likely to happen? So if you've got a deadline, which I did because I had this winter course, plan what actions you need to take, pop them into your calendar and time block them in there and take these actions in a timely manner. So months ago, put the runs into my calendar, put the line work and fitness into my calendar to make sure that it happened. And I've done the same with all of my other kind of goals and projects that are coming together because now at the end of the year, I have a lot of stuff coming together and I want to make sure I achieve all my goals and I'm taking the actions I need to take. So you've got to plan this stuff in advance. And for me, the best way to do that is getting it into the calendar. So it's like I've got the deadline and I work backwards from that to see what I need to do in the time frame that I have. So with stuff like my walk a thousand miles, at this point only have about 25 miles left to go. But I've looked in my calendar and I've checked and rechecked to make sure that I have my last couple of walks planned in my calendar and that they happen so that I can achieve this goal. The same thing for my book. I've got dates in my calendar that I blocked out kind of big chunks of time to work on the book. Wrapping up my Bardic grade training for my Druid group. And I've got stuff to go through before I turn in my review for that. I've got time blocked out my calendar for that. So if you've got a deadline, either a self-imposed deadline or kind of a concrete deadline like the winter course, which was happening whether or not I did it, get that deadline and work back from there to see when and where and how and how often you need to take the practical actions that you need to take to get your best possible outcome. So this is all assuming that we're worrying about stuff that we can actually control all the stuff that I've mentioned, all of my kind of goals and projects, that's stuff that I absolutely control. But sometimes we worry about things that we have no control over. And that's a bit trickier because we can't take the practical actions, but we can do the mindset work. So if you're worrying about a situation that you have no control over, and there are plenty of situations in life that we have no control over, Like, we can vote, but we can't control politics in our country. We just have one vote. We can't do much to control the economy. Can't do much about traffic. So if you're stuck in a traffic jam, you're stuck. Can't control stuff that happened in the past. Can't control the weather. Can't control what other people think. We can't control what other people say or feel or do. We can't please everyone. So we can't create a situation where everyone is happy. We can't control time that we've lost, money that we've lost, stuff from the past. Like There are so many things that we can't control. So what do you do about it? If it's stuff from the past, I think that's worth looking at. Look at regrets that you have, decisions that you've made in the past that you're not happy with, get those out of your mind onto paper and realize that you can't do anything about that. All you can do is make better decisions in the future. And I think it's worth bringing this stuff to the forefront of your mind for that reason. Like, you know, I did this thing in the past. It did not work out well for me. How can I avoid that in the future? Like, that's really practical. You know, getting clear on what you would rather do instead in the future. And again, making that future focused. You can't control the stuff that you did in the past. You can't control the the mistakes you made. You can't control the bad decisions you made. 
but you can make sure you don't make the same mistakes or same bad decisions in the future. So that's useful. That's a useful thing to kind of get in your head and wrap your head around. And you need to let go of the worries about the past because again, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't go back in time and fix that stuff. You can't fix kind of the overarching problems that we have in terms of the economy, politics, world leaders, shit that's going on in the world. Don't worry about it. Like do what you can do, which is vote, raise awareness about topics if that's what you choose to do. But there's not that much you could do about that. So don't worry. Do the little things that you can do. And let go of worries about the overarching, gigantic things that affect the world. Global warming, do your part. Climate change, I mean, there are things that we can do to be kinder to the environment. Do those things, but the earth going to do what it's going to do based on what the other billions of people on the planet are doing. So there's only so much we can do about these huge worldly things. So focus on what you can do. And don't worry about the stuff that you have no control over, that you have no power to change. What you may want to do, and this may help with your worries, is again, get all this stuff out of your head because I think it kind of clears up your head from the worries when you write it down and give it that space and those words. It's like, you know, I remember years and years ago when I read the David Allen book, Getting Things Done. The first thing that he recommends that you do is get your tasks out of your head and into a system. This is kind of like that. It's getting your worries out of your head and in a system to actually do something about them. So if you've got these kind of huge worldly worries that are bothering you, stuff that you have no control over, hand it over to whatever higher power or energies you believe in. Ask the universe to help. Ask source to help. Ask spirit to help goddess, whatever you call that higher power or higher energy. Ask for help from your higher self. Ask the angels to help. Ask for help from whatever helpers you usually ask for help. And if you don't have a practice like that, give it a try. Like I read uh, Sonia Choquette's book, Ask Your Guides. Yes, Ask Your Guides read that a few years ago. And ever since then, I've been asking the angels for help. They are with everything, even the smallest things. I just take a couple, a minute and ask for help. So give it a try. You might be surprised. So ask for help from higher sources or energies with the stuff that you can't control. And this is something I should have mentioned before. With the stuff that you can control, the practical action stuff that you can do, Ask for help from either the guides, the angels, source, and also humans. So if there are people that can help you, ask them for help as well with the stuff that you can control. So moving back to things that you can control, ask for help from higher source, ask for help from the angels, but also recognize with everything that not everything works out the way you may want it to. I was just at Avebury for the last couple of days, and that's probably the last time I'm going to be staying in that house. I was really sad. I was disappointed. I was talking to the owner of the house about that, and she was saying, you know, I really wanted you to have the house. And I was like, I really wanted to have the house too. That didn't work out. Sometimes not everything works out the way you want it to. Sometimes it's in our best interest and highest good for something else to happen. Sometimes we just needed to learn something from the experience. So rather than worrying about stuff that you can't control, focus on what you can do. You can do the mindset work. You can ask the higher powers for help. You can take practical action on something. So focus on what you can do. And when you're aware that you have these worries, again, do what you can do. Do the mindset work. Do the practical action. Ask the higher powers. But also focus on self-care. Because worrying is stressful and it can take a toll on your body, which can affect your ability to deal with this stuff that you're worried about. So give yourself permission to take care of yourself, practice self-care, make time, give yourself the time, the space to relax, do some light exercise, meditate, go for a little walk, stretch, like give yourself permission to take care of your mind and body. 
so that you can more effectively deal with the stress of the worry. So that's all for now. I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you are in the Patreon community, pop in there later. I will be posting the journal prompts that I've created for you in the Patreon group. And that's something I've been sharing a bunch of journal prompts lately, but I really want to start kind of tying them into the episodes. And we'll see if that's kind of relevant for all the episodes I do. But when it is relevant, my plan is to start doing some journal prompts for that because I find it really useful to have journal prompts to help me kind of get clarity on things and think about things. So I want to share those with you. So if you're in the Patreon community, head over there, check that out. If you're not, membership starts at just $1 a month. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton, you can join there. That's all for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, for tuning in week after week and listening to me talk. I hope you found this episode interesting and useful. Next week, I am back with Joanna Hennen. We have a really, really good, juicy episode on how to decide which kind of personal and professional development courses to sign up for. And we talk about kind of bad investments that we've made in the past and how we make good investments now. I think a lot of us are kind of addicted to learning and may have fear of missing out. And so we don't always sign up for the things that are right for us. So this is a really in-depth episode of how to make the best investments and decisions in your personal and professional development. So that's coming up next week. For this week, if you want to find the show notes, as always, head over to hollywharton.com forward slash 287 to get the show notes on this episode. And remember to pop into Patreon for the journal prompts. Thank you very much and have a fantastic week. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.